The battlefield has changed, and, well, most people haven't noticed. Camouflage still fools the human eye, but it means nothing to a thermal sensor floating silently overhead. Today, heat is the giveaway, and if you don't understand how heat betrays you, all the planning, stockpiling, and terrain knowledge in the world just won't matter. This is where the idea of the ghost shelter enters the conversation. Not fantasy, not paranoia. Hard-earned logic rooted in physics, history, and, honestly, lessons learned the hard way. This isn't about hiding from people. It's about hiding from machines. Let's get into it. Why thermal detection is the threat most people fail to respect. Thermal imaging doesn't care about walls, colours, or clever camouflage patterns. It sees contrast. That's it. Anything warmer or cooler than its surroundings becomes a glowing confession. A human body at roughly 37 degrees Celsius is practically a beacon in cold terrain. Even in warmer environments, trapped heat radiating through cracks, vents, or thin materials shows up as an anomaly. This is why modern drones, satellites, and handheld thermal scanners are so effective. They don't search for shapes, they search for mistakes. And the biggest mistake is assuming a hidden shelter is automatically a concealed shelter. In World War II, militaries learned quickly that visibility wasn't just about sight lines. Aerial reconnaissance punished anything that broke pattern. Today, thermal surveillance is the next evolution of that same problem. The ghost shelter mindset comes before the shelter itself. Before materials, before digging, before insulation, there's a mindset shift that has to happen. You are not building a structure. You are manipulating heat behavior. A ghost shelter isn't about blocking detection entirely. That's unrealistic. It's about slowing, diffusing, and blending heat until it becomes indistinguishable from background noise. Think less like a builder and more like an engineer. Heat wants to move. Your job is to make that movement boring. The shelter that survives thermal scrutiny doesn't fight physics. It uses it. Location does half the work if you let it. Terrain can either expose you or protect you long before you lift a tool. Dense forests with layered canopies naturally trap and scatter thermal signatures. Underground soil stays cooler and more stable than surface air. Rock formations, caves with deep overhangs, and earth-covered structures all dampen heat transmission. Water is, you know, another quiet ally. Building near or against a riverbank allows temperature differentials to blur your heat signature. Flowing water constantly absorbs and redistributes thermal energy, making detection far more difficult. What you avoid matters just as much. Open fields, ridge lines, and exposed hills are, frankly, thermal death traps. They create high contrast between you and the environment. No amount of insulation fixes bad placement. Insulation isn't about comfort. It's about delay. Most people think insulation is about staying warm. In a ghost shelter, insulation is about buying time. Heat that escapes slowly is harder to detect than heat that escapes all at once. Natural materials are your first layer. Packed earth, straw, moss, leaves and wood fibres trap air and slow heat transfer. These materials were used instinctively for centuries because they work. Next comes reflective insulation. 
Foil or mylar layers facing outward reflect radiant heat back inward. This isn't about trapping heat forever. It's about preventing sudden spikes that thermal cameras love. The final layer must match the environment. Soil looks like soil. Rock looks like rock. Debris looks like debris. This outer skin absorbs and releases heat at roughly the same rate as its surroundings, keeping your shelter thermally boring. Layering is the secret. No single material does the job alone. Ventilation is where most shelters fail. Seal everything too tightly and, well, you create a new problem. Heat and humidity build up, pressure increases, and eventually that energy escapes in one concentrated plume. Thermal sensors spot it instantly. So ventilation has to exist, but it must be sneaky. The smartest approach is horizontal diffusion. Instead of venting upward into open air, vent into earth. A shallow underground trench lined with natural materials disperses warmth slowly into the soil. By the time that heat reaches the surface, it's spread thin and indistinct. Open flames inside the shelter are a gamble. If heat is necessary, use heat sinks. Dense containers absorb warmth and release it gradually. Small insulated stoves that radiate into walls instead of outward air reduce thermal spikes dramatically. In World War II, field units learned to cook away from camps and sleep cold to avoid detection. The principle hasn't changed. Only the sensors have. Blending thermal patterns matters as much as blocking them. A ghost shelter isn't invisible if it creates unnatural patterns. Sudden temperature differences, sharp edges, or uniform warmth draw attention. Nature is messy. Your shelter should be too. Moss, wet soil, stones, and irregular textures absorb and release heat unevenly, just like the environment around them. This breaks up clean thermal outlines. Soldiers historically used wet blankets and layered earth to confuse aerial observation. Today, the same logic disrupts digital sensors. You're not hiding heat. You're disguising it. Testing is non-negotiable if you're serious. Assumptions get people caught. Testing exposes weak points. Handheld thermal cameras are now affordable and brutally honest. Walk the perimeter at dawn, midday and night. Different temperatures reveal different flaws. Take notes. Adjust insulation. Redirect vents. Add material where heat bleeds through. This iterative approach, well, it really does mirror historical military doctrine. You see, defensive systems are refined over time. They're not perfected on the very first attempt. Often it's the small changes that end up producing massive improvements. Sometimes just a few extra inches of soil or simply redirecting a vent can make all the difference between blending in and, you know, lighting up like a flare. Applying ghost shelter principles in real-world scenarios is, well, quite fascinating. In forested terrain, a small log structure lined with straw and foil, roofed in moss and earth, and vented through underground channels can, in fact, disappear from short-range thermal scans. In abandoned urban environments, Basements offer natural thermal shielding. Layering rubble, insulation and controlled venting through crawl spaces diffuses heat into surrounding concrete and soil. Even temporary shelters benefit from these principles, you know. Tents and tarps combined with insulating blankets, 
ground contact and careful vent placement dramatically reduce thermal exposure during brief stays. The scale changes. The physics do not. Disappearing is a skill, not a trick. Thermal detection is just another adversary. One you study. One you respect. One you adapt to. A ghost shelter is not about fear. It's about awareness. It's the evolution of lessons learned in World War II, refined with modern materials and modern threats. When you understand how heat behaves, you stop reacting and start controlling outcomes. That's the difference between hiding and vanishing. If this breakdown sharpened your understanding and gave you something new to think about, make sure you subscribe to History HQ, share this with fellow historians and survivalists, and stay tuned. Because history isn't just something we study, it's something we apply.